Okay, well our next speaker has shared with us that she, for those of you who have brothers, particularly older brothers, you can definitely relate to sometimes being a little bullied, maybe a little pushed around, right? So through that, when she was bullied and teased by her older brothers, she developed the nickname Murdoch. So she kind of went through life with this, yeah, nickname Murdoch, and then they kind of collectively discovered, oh, from the A-team, like Murdoch from the A-team, but that wasn't the intention at all. So she's like, what? <laughs> I'm like a... I have the nickname of a man in his 50s from the A-team. What is this? What's going on? So, but she has kept the, the nickname and loves it. So you guys can refer to as Murdoch from now on. And that is speaker Marisol Diaz. She's with the Department of Kinesiology. And she's going to share with us 100 Citizens, the CSU expansion. Chair, Dr. Stephen Loy. Shall we say Murdoch? <laughs> Marisol. I want you to meet Irma. Irma started with 100 Citizens, and when she started with, with our program, she was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. After six months of being, uh, after be, after six months of being with, the, with our program, she went to go visit her doctor, and her doctor was able to take her off her medication because she was able to control her sugar levels. I also want you to meet Margie. Margie had the fear of going onto the escalator and also going onto the stairs because she felt that she, her balance was very poor. She also felt that she, wasn't, she didn't have enough strength in her grip to hold onto the rail. After being, in six, after being in 100 Citizens for six months, she was able to overcome her fear and she is now able to go up the escalator without uh, having that fear of falling. The CDC has created guidelines that the general population can follow so that they can become healthy through physical activity. They recommend 150 minutes to 300 minutes a week of moderate to moderate intensity exercise. But what do you think people do when they hear about this or when they read about these guidelines? They just walk. That is a, the reason why they just walk is because that's the only thing that they know. It's something that is accessible for them. But do you think that if Margie, do you think that if Margie was just walked, would she be able to increase her strength in her grip? Do you think that she would be able to improve her balance by just walking? Probably not. So if we, want, if we include a variety of exercises into our workout, exercises that focus on balance, exercises that focus on muscular strength, endurance, we will, be, we, will be, we will be able to see greater results in everyone. 100 Citizens focuses, focuses on teaching the community how to exercise with proper form technique. They teach the community the benefits of exercise. We, we take them through a whole workout, but we don't just tell them to exercise. We also make sure that they do these exercises correctly so that they don't get injured. We help them understand the importance of these exercises. We also implement a 12-week diabetes prevention program that, that requires them to attend a one-hour exercise class along with a 15-minute health education class three times a week. 100 Citizens has, in the last four years, 100 Citizens has made an impact in the city of San Fernando, in Canoga Park, Crescenda Valley, and in Silmar. Now, imagine if we were to expand this program to all of California. How many Margies and how many Irmas would we help? How many of them would we help to improve the quality, their quality of life? I am currently working to create a manual that other universities will be able to use. This manual lists every step that we have taken to implement 100 citizens. They will be able to use it as a guide. They will be able to use it, use it as a guide and refer to it whenever they need to. I am also working on, on implementing a workshop in the next couple weeks where I have invited the rest, where I have invited all Cal State Universities to attend. 
Now, I want you to imagine if every kinesiology department in all of, in every, in all 23 Cal State universities were to partner up with public parks to implement 100 citizens, the results will probably be unimaginable. It will definitely uh, improve the public's health. For this workshop, I have invited the, the rest of the CSUs, but one thing, that I, one thing that we did do is also have them identify students to send to this workshop. We currently have 12 universities that will be attending the workshop. Throughout this workshop, we will take them through all of, procedure, all of our procedures. They will be able to observe our program and how we implement and run the program and they will be able to see the importance of kinesiology students within 100 citizens. We will also show them the importance of uh, data collection, of keeping rosters, and also the importance of partnering up with the public parks. They will be able to learn how to communicate with these public parks and build a very strong relationship. We will also teach them how they themselves can can implement a safe workout exercise to the community that would, that would fit everyone's fitness level, regardless if they're older adults, young adults, middle-aged, and they will also be able to learn how to modify these exercises. So the two, 100 Citizens has two purposes. The purpose is to, to build healthier communities by providing a program that's accessible to them, but also to to give the students an opportunity to gain, uh, to gain uh, ex work experience, to build on leadership skills, and also to be able to create jobs for them within the parks and recreation. Thank you so much for your presentation, Marisol. Um, one question I did have, you mentioned working with the other Cal States, the other CSU programs, and you mentioned um, universities with kinesiology programs, or that's who you might be connecting with. Um, who are you intending on connecting with at the universities or providing the manual to in programs that don't have a kinesiology, or in universities that don't have a kinesiology program? Well, for right now, we are only working with those that do have a kinesiology okay. department. I have been working with my, with my advisor, and he's also been contacting the faculties at different universities. I've also been trying to get in, I've also been in contact with the others, uh, other departments through the students, so through Facebook, through their uh, club emails. So I've been able to communicate with them, but also, as I mentioned, my professor has been able to communicate to the faculty, so they're not, the students are not just hearing it from, their, from students, from the other students, but they're also hearing it from their own professors. Great, thank you. Thank you so much.